Good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Michael Keelock, the Director of Communications and Public Relations for the Diocese of Providence, and it's my pleasure to welcome you here for this joyful and historic day for the Diocese of Providence and for Rhode Island. Uh, we're grateful for the Holy Father's announcement this morning, and just a bit of housekeeping. Uh, the bishops uh, have some statements to read that will also be available in the press kit afterwards, and just ask that you hold your questions. We'll have a question and uh, answer opportunity uh, after the statements. Um, so without anything else, um, I'll introduce you to Bishop Thomas Tobin, the eighth Bishop of Providence. Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome. Thanks, first of all, to Michael Keelock for organizing our program today and preparing for everything. We're very, very grateful, and welcome to the members of the media who are here today and also members of our own diocesan family. Thank you all for coming together today. And truly, it's a very, very appropriate that we gather today on this day before Thanksgiving, the day when we as a nation and as a church pause to recall and to thank God for all the gifts and blessings which he has given to us. And today we have another wonderful blessing for which to be grateful, the appointment of Bishop Richard Henning as the co-adjutor bishop of the Diocese of Providence. A co-adjutor bishop is appointed in a diocese to assist the diocesan bishop to actively share in the governance of the diocese and to immediately succeed the diocesan bishop when his resignation from office, his retirement is accepted. I am most grateful, truly grateful to our Holy Father, Pope Francis, for approving my request to have a co juder bishop appointed for the Diocese of Providence. I'm also grateful to the Apostolic Nuncio, Archbishop Christophe Pierre, for his guidance and his assistance during this process, which really began last spring. And on behalf of our entire diocesan family, we're grateful to the Diocese of Rockville Center for sharing with us such a good, talented, and faithful bishop like Bishop Henning. It's a great gift from Rockville Center to our diocese. I suppose we'll have to send them a first round draft choice in exchange, I suppose. <laughs> But Bishop Henning comes to us with a very impressive academic credentials with diverse pastoral experiences and a true pastoral heart and with an eagerness to listen and to learn and to lead. Bishop Henning is fully prepared to assume the leadership of the Diocese of Providence when that time comes. And I pray and I hope that that will happen in the very near future. I also want to take a moment today to note that today also marks the official retirement of Bishop Robert Evans as the Auxiliary Bishop of Providence. This moment carries mixed emotions for me and for all of us in the diocese. I've known Bishop Evans for more than 50 years since we were seminary classmates. And for almost 50 years now, Bishop Evans has served the Diocese of Providence as a priest and in the last 13 years, as a bishop. No one knows or loves the Diocese of Providence more than Bishop Evans. We are all deeply grateful for his ministry. He is deeply loved and highly respected in this diocese. We are pleased that Bishop Evans will still be with us, offering prayerful support and liturgical and sacramental assistance and occasionally an outstanding Italian meal if we treat him well. Bishop Evans, thank you very much. And <laughs> you were gone a long time ago. <laughs> Earlier this year, we celebrated the 150th anniversary of the Diocese of Providence 
And we know that in the history of the church, and truly in each diocese, bishops and priests as shepherds of God's people naturally will come and go. But Jesus is our good shepherd who remains with us always, loving and caring for his flock. For that reason, we enter this time of transition in the Diocese of Providence. We embrace the future with total confidence, with hope and with joy. As the coming Advent and Christmas season remind us, Jesus is Emmanuel, the God who is with us always, and that gives us peace. Bishop Henning, my brother, your biography says that you have a lifelong passion for the water, for sailing, boating, and kayaking. Well, then there is no better place for you to be than here in the ocean state. Welcome to Rhode Island. You will come to know and to love the Diocese of Providence, and I know that you will be greatly loved in return. Bishop Henning, be assured of my personal friendship, my prayerful support, and my total cooperation as you begin writing this new chapter in your priestly life and ministry. Now we'll ask the bishop to offer a few words to us. So first thing, congratulations to uh, Bishop Evans. I wish you many long years of happiness and continued ministry here in this wonderful diocese. Uh, I would just like to uh, uh, say praise God from, all, from whom all good things flow. Um, I, I wish you all a very happy Thanksgiving to you and yours. Uh, it's certainly a beautiful moment for me to give thanks in my life for the many blessings uh, that I have received. And I'm very grateful for your presence here today uh, on the eve of the holiday. Thank you. You honor me. Um, I just want to express my gratitude uh, first to our Holy Father, to Pope Francis, uh, for his confidence and for this great gift of this new ministry here uh, in this beautiful state and to this wonderful Diocese of Providence. I am very grateful to uh, Bishop Tobin for his very gracious welcome to me. Uh, I, I'm really grateful in this case because uh, the Holy Father's also given me the gift of time to be apprenticed to you and to, to learn from you. So uh, I thank God and I thank you and the Holy Father for that. I also owe a debt of gratitude to Bishop Murphy and Bishop Barris who formed me in the Diocese of Rothfuss Center and to so many people, family and friends, educators, parishioners, brother priests, brother deacons, uh, with whom I have worked and ministered and who have uh, supported and sustained me over these years. Um, on this day, I'm filled with gratitude. I'm also filled with an awareness of my own limits and my need for God's grace. And I uh, will certainly ask uh, the good people of this state and of this wonderful diocese uh, to pray for me uh, and to pray for our uh, shared mission to live and to proclaim uh, the grace and mercy of Jesus Christ. So thank you all very much. Happy Thanksgiving. God bless you. this process, I like to describe it as a, as a play with, with three acts. This is the first act today, the, uh, the announcement the, of a, a new coadjutor. That's part one. Part two will be when the bishop is formally welcomed and received as the coadjutor, which will take place in a ceremony at the end of January. That's when the Apostolic Nuncio will be here to officially present to Bishop Henning the Pope's letter of appointment to become the co-juder. That's part two. And part three will be uh, when my letter of retirement is accepted by the Holy Father and the, uh, my retirement begins and Bishop Henning will become then the diocesan bishop. So there's three steps. This is part one. Part two will be in January at the ceremony when he is officially received. And part three will be my retirement whenever that comes in the Holy Father's good time. 
Um, and Bishop Henning will become then the diocesan bishop. So I'm feeling good. I'm feeling very good, but we know we still have uh, some work to do in, in the months to come. Um, I am going to admit to you that uh, I have to do a lot of learning. I've been here as a tourist, um, and I've enjoyed the beauty of your state. Uh, I guess now my state too. Um, but I will be kind of a spiritual migrant. So I'm going to take a page from Pope Francis's call to be a listening church, and I, I certainly hope to learn uh, more, about, not only about this state, but really the stories of its people and, and your, your hopes and dreams. And I want to uh, be able to walk with you and understand your faith um, and, and really receive that witness of faith. Well, uh, honest truth is I only learned uh, this news myself about a week ago and I have not had a formal briefing. I've certainly been Googling <laughs> 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 um, and, and reading and looking at uh, stories from uh, the Royal Island Catholic, uh, trying to, to learn. But I think that's part of this, what the Bishop Tobin's talking about with stages. Uh, I'll be certainly visiting over the next several months and being able to learn more. Uh, but I, I don't, uh, I can't say at this time that I have any uh, depth of knowledge uh, of this state or of this diocese. And my best, uh, I think, and wisest course really is first to listen and learn. My advice probably can't be public, but <laughs> <laughs> um, no, as, as we've said, it is a process of learning, as, as you indicate. I've been here for 18 years now, coming from uh, the Diocese of Youngstown, Ohio, and before that in Pittsburgh. So it takes some time to get into um, the life of the local church. In some ways, of course, the work of the church is always the same. It's the work of carrying on the work of Jesus as a teacher, as a sanctifier, as a leader, as a shepherd. So in some ways, regardless of who you are or where you go, the work of the church is always the same. On the other hand, every place is unique with its own history. You have to learn about the history and the culture and the people and the organization. So um, it takes some time, and I think you learn your way into it. And uh, Bishop Henning is a very uh, quick study. He won't have any trouble at all learning about the diocese. And as I said, he will come to know and, and love the diocese very well. But it, it will take some time. And we have these intervening months that we will work very closely together. So there will be a very smooth transition when, when that takes place. I'm sorry, I didn't hear. Okay. Well, I think a lot of people are paying attention today. <laughs> if you look around with the media who are here, and a lot of it has to be coordinated with the Holy See, with the Vatican. Keep in mind, it's not Thanksgiving in Rome. <laughs> so it had to be coordinated with the announcement in Rome and uh, with the Apostolic Nuncio in Washington. And this seemed to be a good time, so we would have it done, in fact, before Thanksgiving, before we get into Advent, too close to Christmas. I guess there's never a perfect time, but we thought this would be a pretty good time. But basically, we were coordinating this with the announcement that took place today in Rome. I really don't know, and, and it's purely at the Holy Father's discretion, as you suggest. Um, and the law of the church says, when I turn 75, and there on that day or thereabouts, I will send a formal letter to the Holy Father asking to resign from office, asking to retire. That's part of the law of the church. It's what we celebrate with Bishop Evans today. Um, but when the Holy Father responds to that, I really have no idea. There are some bishops in the country who are... 76 or 77 who are still serving. So it depends, I think, a lot on the individual's request and on the local circumstances of the diocesan church. Now, those bishops I mentioned who are 76 and 77 and still serving, they don't have the gift, the blessing of a co-juder. I have a co-juder. We will have a co-juder. So the transition, I think, will happen pretty quickly. And I've already indicated in my 
preliminary correspondence with the Holy See that I hope that my um, retirement will be accepted in a timely manner. But again, that's just um, a wish. I, I hope that the uh, uh, transition period doesn't take too long, but um, that's purely up to the Holy Father. It could be, I'm guessing, sometime in the spring, but that's surely beyond my, my call. Um, we'll see. I, I don't want to be a lame duck forever. I'd rather be a dead duck, I guess. <laughs> Uh, in terms of my biggest achievement, my biggest accomplishment, I'm not sure I'm ready to assess that yet. Again, I still have several months, maybe more than that, to serve as diocesan bishop. I think when the time comes for my retirement, I'll be in a better shape to uh, reflect upon that personally, and I think there'll be a chance for a lot of other people to offer their evaluation, too, about um, accomplishments and failures. So I uh, haven't really started down that road yet, but, but the time for that will come. Well, it's certainly been a you know long and difficult process uh, to be going through that. Um, you know, for the Diocese of Brockville Center, uh, the decision to uh, enter into Chapter 11 uh, was driven by the desire to uh, first be able to um, uh, have the resources to address survivors, but also to be able to continue the mission of the church in, in the circumstances in which the diocese found itself. Um, so that certainly has been a learning experience. It's not something I hope for <laughs> to experience ever again. Um, but I certainly uh, have respect um, for the leadership that have undertaken this and how they've done it. I think there's been a lot of integrity and commitment both to survivors and to the mission of the church. Well, um, I, th I think, you know, when uh, my parents asked me the question, <laughs> uh, my first answer was that, you know, in a very real sense, this is an opportunity as an auxiliary bishop to become pastor, you know, to, um, uh, to be able to um, really share my heart with the people of God and, and look for the same in return. And those are the experiences as a priest and even as a bishop that have meant the most to me. Um, obviously, in the life of the Catholic Church, especially in a state like this where it's so large and diverse and has so many institutions, such a storied history, there is a kind of bureaucratic reality of the church. Um, but really, the heart of the church is found in, in parish life and in you know, men and women who come together in faith, uh, who seek to know that uh, mercy of the Lord and to live it in the world. So, so being as one day, being diocesan bishop, I hope, will, uh, you know, kind of take me less uh, or from some of the more bureaucratic work that I've been doing and give me more of that pastoral work. So that, that's what it would sort of make my heart sing, I guess. How would this be worth the life of a So um, I was uh, in the fifth grade in a Catholic grammar school in suburban New York, a place called Valley Stream. Um, my father was a city fireman, my mother a baby nurse at the New York Foundling and later a uh, homemaker. Um, and there was a priest who came and spoke about vocations and I remember turning to one of my classmates, Michael Heaney, and saying, I think I want to be a priest. Um, that idea came and went over through my childhood but never quite went away. Um, and so you kind of feel that tug uh, of the Holy Spirit. and. Uh, so I realized at one point I just had to respond one way or the other. Um, but I would say that, uh, you know, growing up in that parish, certainly the, um, the witness of the parish priest there was, was powerful. But really my vocation was born in the home with my parents. Um, both of them, you know, chose paths in life that were devoted to others, and that left its mark on me. <laughs> so I guess now I have to be a Steelers fan. <laughs> well, why don't why don't I just since since I'm new and I have a lot to learn, why don't I stay neutral and say that that there is a team 
that I admire very much and I would like to join and play for. And that's the one which is uh, really surrounding our Blessed Mother, the Saints. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to aim for that team uh, right now. And we'll see along the way what I learn from all of you. All right. what, what a good and safe answer that was. <laughs> Uh, well, entirely. <laughs> so, um, you know, he is the Holy Father, uh, and so we have a shared faith in Jesus Christ. We belong to the communion of the church. Um, so uh, I, I think this Holy Father, uh, so I guess, um, forgive me if I read between the lines, but you're asking me, do I uh, in any way sort of dissent from him? And the answer is, when it comes to Catholic teaching, no, I do not. Um, in fact, one of the most moving experiences in my life uh, was the ad limina visit uh, that we made. Ad limina is the every five year visit. So as a new bishop, uh, we went over uh, and had a two hour personal meeting with the Holy Father. It was, it was remarkable. Um, in person, he's just uh, amazing. Um, but you know, the Holy Father also uh, doesn't expect us to be automatons, right? He wants us to, to think and pray and reflect. That's part of what he's asking of us uh, with the synodal process. Um, so I, I, would, I think that as, as a diocesan bishop, it will be my duty really to, uh, again, down the road, um, to pray and to exercise uh, leadership um, and to do so in accord with my conscience and in accord with the teaching of the church. Um, so I, I would never see that as putting me at odds uh, with the Holy Father. Thank you. No, just again, thank you all for being here very much today and a very happy and blessed Thanksgiving to you and your families. I'll be praying for all the members of our diocese church and I ask your prayers for me and for Bishop Henning and for the diocese in the days to come. So thank you very much. God bless you and happy Thanksgiving. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.